Here we're in Microsoft Dynamics, and we're taking a look at uh, the particular work orders that are available. If we uh, filter it down to the CEU work orders that we're dealing with, you can see that there's none in the ending in 23, which is what we're going to do now and create a new production work order. So production order gets uh, established, we create the dialog, we key in the number 23, we then do a search on the particular item ID, we pull that one up directly from one that we want to produce, and it comes up to automatically with the, with the list, again through Dynamics AX, part of the product standards, standard uh, lot size of 5 to run with this one, we create the production order. We now it's no it's part of the list. So we're looking at all production orders. If we filter that down to the ones we're looking for, we're going to find our particular work order that we just created. And there it is, number 23. So we then at this point say, okay, let's estimate this particular work order. What's the cost going to be? Timing, scheduling, and planning. Put that through in terms of Dynamics AX to do that. You'll see the status is now changed to estimated. So we're in a position to start actually processing and manufacturing this particular product. So we then key in on the particular same work order and say, okay, what are we going to do in this stage here? Let's take a look at the routing so we understand what we're working with. And the particular routing is made up of six individual operation steps, 10 through 15. We see the runtime associated with each, the stepping uh, operation steps accordingly. We see the resource requirements running on particular machine 102. So we know the resource of uh, each of those uh, particular steps and operations. If we check machine 102, we're now on the Merlin dashboard. We're looking at the machine detail for machine 102. We see the current work order is a different one that's running right now because we haven't actually loaded it onto Merlin at this point. We can see that we're in the job queue. We can see the current running work order. We can see the jobs that are in the queue. Again, not loaded from Dynamics yet. Take another view in the visual job queue. We look at the um, actual jobs in the queue. And again, for machine 102, those ones aren't there. So now we're going to say, let's actually schedule this particular job to run to Mer MX Merlin system. So we say OK. We find the particular job to run. We say OK. And this job is now created and it is sent to the production order electronically to the Memex Merlin manufacturing execution system. So we see that's there. We push OK and we're fired off to Memex Merlin. So we'll go take a look and see where it is in Memex at this point having verified that it wasn't there before. We do have to start the particular job, so we make sure that that's started. We say it's there, so it's ready to run in terms of the status. We obviously have to keep track of it within Dynamics to know exactly what we're working with. You see we're in Machine 102, you see the current jobs. We refresh the list at this point, and notice all those operation steps are now in the queue, ready to be run. It's still running the existing work order that's on the machine, so we haven't asked it to run it yet, but we will shortly. So now we check again just another view in the visual job queue. And again, you can see those operation steps are now loaded and ready to be processed. So we then turn around and look at the operator interface. And the operator can actually run multiple machines here. We check the work orders. And there you go. There's the operation steps already loaded with different sequence numbers and so on that we can control. So we say, there you go, five parts required. We say, accept that work order, and let's actually run that. You'll notice the current running work order will now change, and the new one is uh, up and running for the parts that we're trying to produce. So we're in a, in a view that we can see this. Let's take a look at it at the machine detail screen of the dashboard. We see the new work order that's put together there. It's ready to go. Uh, we're synchronizing the main server in terms of detail information. We take a view, we refresh the view of the job queue. We can see what the current running job is as we've loaded. The other ones are still in the queue ready to go. We can see now that the uh, parts have been reset uh, for part counts. So we're tracking status for the job as it is now running um, on the actual machine. So we see here on the machine it's running zero parts produced, five parts required. We're ready to go. And we can see that the other work orders are still in the queue ready to go for next ones. And we'll run those as we go forward to process this particular job. We also have the ability to look at many other areas when we're in that particular status of the machines. And now we'll notice we've run, we've actually run through to job fi operation step 15. We had a number of parts produced, so we can see that we've got three good parts, one reject, and five parts required, but four parts are made. So we're just about at the end of the cycle here. 
and we take a look and we see that we have one particular reject or scrap reason. If we go down and check the scrap reasons, and here's a particular view that we can see from machine 102. We see the machine, there is a scrap for not applicable. In this particular case, it was picked up by the machines. And we can graphically look at that in different areas. And we know the percentages and pie chart breakdowns, 3Ds, however you want to do. All based upon the good tool set from Microsoft. And we see here, that's what, what we're working with in terms of the dashboard for the actual accounts in itself. Notice we're in production hold. It's just in the process of changing over to the new job. In fact, as we watch here, we can see the job has actually changed over. And we can see the new particular work order is running. So our last one is complete in the real-time screens. We now go back to Microsoft Dynamics and we say, let's view for that particular work order what the results were. So what was reported as finished that came from Memex Merlin? And we can see here we're pulling up the particular lines and the detail for that particular job. And we can see here now that that job has been completed, reported as finished in Dynamics of a good part of one and a reject part of, uh, sorry, reject part of one and a good part of four, exactly as what we reported on the Memex Merlin system. So we've gone through and shown a two-way link downloading production orders to the machines and then the results from the machines back into the uh, Dynamics AX ERP system.